Hi everyone, Miss Michelle here and thank you for joining me for TV Continue today. I will be reading the first chapter of Night Books by J.A. White. If you're into spooky books about witches, check this one out. Chapter 1. The Wrong Floor. After his family had finally fallen asleep, Alex slung the backpack over his shoulder and snuck out of the apartment, easing the front door gently home so it didn't slam shut. The eighth floor hallway looked drearier than ever without any sunlight coming through its small windows. Alex lingered on the doormat, fighting the urge to return to his warm, comfortable bed. If you do that, he thought, you'll still be the same old Alex Masha tomorrow. Weirdo, freak, loser. Is that what you want? No, he whispered. Before he could change his mind, Alex started toward the elevator at the end of the hall. During the day, snippets of the neighbors' lives leaked through the thin doors, muffled conversations, the loud blare of televisions, Miss Garcia's son practicing his violin. At this time of night, however, the hallway was nearly silent. The only sounds were a grimy light bulb that buzzed like an angry hornet and a soft, and a soft rustling from Alex's backpack as though its contents were struggling to escape their fate. Sorry, Alex thought, feeling a wave of guilt. I wish I didn't have to do this, but it's better this way. He reached the elevator and pressed the down button on the cracked panel. Far below, ancient gears squealed away the silence. Alex winced and peeked over his shoulder, hoping that the sound didn't wake any of his neighbors. The stairs would have been a quieter option, but Alex wanted to reach his destination as quickly as possible so he didn't have an opportunity to second guess his decision. Ding! The elevator doors jerked open with a pain squeak. Smudge mirrors paneled the wall. Alex stepped inside and clicked the B button. The basement was his favorite place in the entire apartment building. It was spooky and weird and packed ceiling high with towers of knickknacks left behind by former tenants, like a graveyard for unwanted items. The most amazing part, however, was the boiler an iron monster built nearly 60 years ago. Alex called it Old Smokey. It was his destination tonight. The elevators, elevator doors closed and the car began to descend in slow, jerky increments. Alex tapped his foot impatiently. Though his backpack was far lighter than usual, it seemed to weigh him down like an anchor. I'll feel better after they're gone, he thought. Just toss them in the flames and walk away. Don't even stick around to watch them burn. Of course, Alex could have just dumped the contents of his backpack down the trash chute and been done with it, but that seemed cool. Cremating them in Old Smokey felt more honorable, like setting the body of a fallen warrior aflame. Alex figured he owed them a good death, at least. After all, he was the one that had created them. The elevator stopped and the doors creaked open. Alex tilted his head in confusion. Instead of the basement, an unfamiliar hallway stretched out before him. He checked the digital display at the top of the elevator. Four. Must be broken, he thought, jabbing the B button with his index finger. The elevator didn't move. Alex sighed with frustration. Looks like I'm taking the stairs after all, he thought. He stepped off the elevator and headed toward the stairwell. The fourth floor had the same basic layout as the eighth, but it was noticeably darker. Alex glanced up at the light bulbs, wondering if a few of them had burned out, but they seemed to be working fine. For some strange reason, however, their glow didn't radiate as far as it should, as though the darkness of this particular hallway was harder to penetrate than the ordinary kind. Just my crazy imagination, Alex thought, ignoring the cold sensation creeping down his spine. The bulbs are probably just old, or he heard voices. They were coming from the apartment at the end of the hall. At first, Alex thought it was just the people who lived there. As he got closer, however, creepy music rose in the background, and Alex realized that the voices belonged to the char characters from a movie. He broke into a big grin as he recognized the dialogue. That's Night of the Living Dead, he thought. Alex had been four years old the first time he saw the movie. He was supposed to have been asleep, but the strange sounds coming from the living room had piqued his curiosity. 
And so he had crept out of bed to investigate. His mom and dad were cuddled up on the couch sh sharing a bowl of popcorn. Alex hid behind his dad's easy chair and trained his eyes on the television. He had never been so terrified or exhilarated in his life. By the time that his parents realized they had an unwelcome visitor, it was too late. Alex was in love. At the end of the month, his Thomas trains had been exiled to a bin in the basement, replaced by toy monsters, plastic fangs, and a stuffed ghost named Boo. He dismantled his Lego fire trucks and rocket ships and used the bricks to build a haunted house. At the library, Alex insisted on borrowing only the picture books with little Halloween labels on their spines, despite the fact that it was June. Night of the Living Dead had been his introduction to the world of creepy things. And for that reason, it held a special place in his heart. Hearing it now, an overpowering desire to watch the movie again fogged all other thoughts. Alex approached the door of apartment 4E, the static-filled soundtrack reeling him in like a fishing line, and pressed his ear against it. It was one of the earliest scenes in the movie, just before Barbara and her brother were, are attacked by, the, by a zombie at the graveyard. I've barely missed anything at all, Alex thought with excitement. He had, for the moment, completely forgotten about his backpack and his reason for coming out tonight. All he could think about was the movie. He was desperate to see it. If Alex had been thinking clearly, he might have realized that this didn't make any sense. After all, he could watch Night of the Living Dead any time he wanted on his iPad. Surely that was a better choice than knocking on a stranger's door in the middle of the night. Unfortunately, Alex was not thinking clearly. His green eyes, unusually so sharp, usually so sharp and inquisitive behind their glasses, had gone uncharacteristically flat and his mouth hung open in a baffled expression, giving him a striking resemblance to one of the zombies from the movie. Alex knocked on the door with three quick taps. A woman answered almost immediately, as though she had been expecting his arrival. Well, look at this, she said, peering down at him. A visitor. The woman was in her late 20s with dark skin and short spiky hair. She wore all black and a lot of makeup, especially around the eyes. I'm sorry, Alex said, his mind swirling. What am I doing here? I, what am I doing here? I don't know why I knocked. I just heard, what did you hear? She asked, leaning forward with an eager expression. Tell me. The movie. The woman smiled. There were tiny gaps between her narrow teeth, giving her the look of one of those weird glowing fish that prowl the deepest part of the ocean. A movie? She asked with genuine curiosity. That's new. Which one? Alex gave the woman a strange look. He could still hear the television blaring behind her, the zombie now banging on the window of Barbara's car, yet she was acting like she heard nothing at all. Don't you know? Alex asked. Why should I? The movie's for you, not me. She opened the door wider. You want to watch it? She asked. I bet it's one of your favorites. A beam of fear cut through the fog of Alex's thoughts. It's the middle of the night, and I'm having a conversation with a total stranger like it's the most normal thing in the world. He thought, what's wrong with me? He took a step back, intending to leave as quickly as possible, when he smelled something wonderful coming from the apartment. Freshly baked pumpkin pie, his favorite he breathed in the comforting smells of nutmeg and cinnamon and all his fears instantly evaporated. This woman, is, woman isn't a threat, he thought. She's just a nice lady who likes horror movies like me. The movie's Night of the Living Dead, Alex said, 1968, directed by George Romero. Ah, said the woman, how intriguing. And was I right? It's one of your favorites. Top 10, right between Let the Right One In and The Ring. Alex shrugged apologetically. I like scary stuff. You sound like my kind of kid, the woman replied. It's crazy. I was just about to kick back and watch the movie when I thought the only thing missing is someone to share this with, someone who really appreciates it. And here you are. She opened the door all the way, allowing Alex a view of a comfortable looking couch and a coffee table piled with oatmeal, raisin cookies and pumpkin pie. Across from this cozy setup, a huge TV played the black and white images he longed to see. Barbara staggering toward the farmhouse where she would be trapped for the rest of the movie with zombies in hot pursuit. Alex took a step forward, entranced. 
Well, don't just stand there gawking, silly boy, the woman said. Come inside. Even later, when Alex knew that he had been under the influence of a powerful spell, he found it hard to believe that he had entered the apartment so easily. At the time, it was like his body was not his own, but a moth drawn to the flickering lights of the television. He crossed the threshold. The door clicked shut behind him. Gotcha, the woman said under her breath. She slipped a cold hand around his wrist and all the energy seemed to leave his body. Alex sank into the, cr the, the cushions of a nearby couch, barely able to keep his eyes open. The woman eased into the chair across from him. The smile had faded from her lips. What's your name? She asked. Alexander? Alex? Which one? Alex, he said. He looked around the apartment in confusion. The television had vanished along with the coffee table and pumpkin pie. Where'd the TV go? Alex asked. There was never, it was never there. No, I saw it, he insisted. The apartment does what it can to get you inside, different for everyone. A movie is an odd choice. Traditionally, it's some sort of food that draws them. Kids are always thinking with their stomachs, you know. I smelled pumpkin pie. There you go. It was becoming harder for Alex to focus. The room kept tilting back and forth like when he fir you first step off the pirate ship ride at an amusement park. He felt like he might be ill. I want to go home, he said. Obviously, that's not going to happen, Alex. He turned in his seat, moving impossibly slow, hoping to make a mad dash for the door. Except the door had vanished. The place where it had once stood was nothing but a blank wall. Where'd the door go, he said groggily. Away, the woman said. Don't worry, you won't be needing it anymore. But that's not possible. Doors don't just... They can't. Haven't you figured it out yet? She asked, grinning with pride. I'm a witch, just like in a storybook. She touched a single fingernail to her forehead, and to his forehead. And you, little mouse, have fallen right into my trap. Alex tried to stand, but his legs had turned to jelly, and he collapsed to the floor instead. A wave of darkness crashed over him. To find out what happens to Alex, check out Nightbooks. Thanks for joining me today, friends. Goodbye.